Hi everybody and welcome back to the Gate of Heaven video diary where we are exploring the story of the Bab who, whose writings are the inspiration for my new album Gate of Heaven and whose life is being celebrated this year which is the 200th anniversary of his birth. Uh, so uh, I hope you're all continuing to enjoy Promised One and I'm really really looking forward to releasing the next song Wondrous Paradise which comes out on Saturday March 16th so keep your ears on that on that Facebook event page Gate of Heaven album release because I'll be posting the song there but in the meantime uh, let's let's dive into the Dawnbreakers and continue this journey so in the last video that the, the Bob had had gathered together his 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 18 letters of the living, his chosen disciples, and he had sent them out into the world to, to spread his message about the, the imminent coming of him whom God will make manifest, the, the promised one of all religions. Uh, but he actually kept two of them behind, his first disciple, Mullah Hussein, and his last disciple, Qudus. And he, he has a, a very special task to give to each of them. And he senses at this moment that, that Mullah Hussein is perhaps hoping that the Bab is going to choose him to accompany him on a very important journey that he's going to go on. The Bab is preparing to go on a pilgrimage to Arabia where he's going to visit the, the sacred places of Islam. And on this pilgrimage, before the thousands of pilgrims who have come from all over the world to, 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 uh, to visit these sacred places, the Bab is going to publicly announce his message that he is the promised one. And he senses that Mullah Hussein is hoping he might, he might choose him to go with him. But the Bab says to him that he has chosen Qudus to come with him on his pilgrimage to Arabia, but that he has a very special task for Mullah Hussein. He asks Mullah Hussein to go to Tehran, to go to the capital and to find a treasure hidden in that city. He says to him, a secret lies hidden in that city. When made manifest, it shall turn the earth into paradise. And so Mullah Hussein accepts the instructions of the Bab and he travels north to the capital city and he doesn't really know what to do because he, he has no idea what he's looking for. He, he, the Bab has just told him to find the hidden treasure of Tehran. And so Mullah Hussein arrives in the city and finds a place to stay. He stays at a branch of the Sheikhi school in Tehran because you see the Sheikhi school had been developed for so many years under the, the care of Sheikh Ahmad and Sayyid Qasem. It had been developed for several decades and had really branched out um, into there were branches of, of the Sheikhi school in different cities around the Middle East. And there, so there was this whole network, a community of, of these schools of, of, of students, probably hundreds of students, studying and preparing for the coming of the Promised One. And so Mullah Hussein takes lodging at the Tehran branch of the Sheikhi school. And the first thing he does when he gets there is he, he announces to the head teacher that the Promised One is come. And he tells him about the Bab. And the head teacher is very dismissive and really kind of arrogant towards Mullah Hussein. He dismisses him and he, he, uh, he, he really he ridicules him and, and, and accuses him of, co of, of bringing embarrassment on the school by claiming that, that, this, that this mere 25-year-old merchant in Shiraz is the promised one. And he, he, he kicks him out of his presence. So Mullah Hussein doesn't press the matter and he retires to his room. And late that night, there's a knock on the door and Mullah Hussein opens the door and there is a student of this school who has overheard the conversation that he had with the, with the head teacher. And he says to Mullah Hussein that he, he, he was very touched by what Mullah Hussein had said and he wonders if he could talk to him for a moment. So the two of them sit together, Mullah Hussein and this student whose name is Mualem. And uh, Mualem starts to just pour his heart out to Mullah Hussein. And Mullah Hussein starts to think that perhaps there is a wisdom in, in this student coming to speak with him. And at one point in the conversation, Mualem mentions that he, he comes from the, the town of Nur in the province of Mazandaran. And it occurs to Mullah Hussein that there was 
a, um, a very well-respected minister of, in the court of the king, whose name was Mirza Buzurg, and who was known for his noble character and his artistic accomplishments and his great contributions to, to Persian society. And he came from Nur in Mazandaran. And so Mullah Hussein asks Mualem, he says, uh, do you know the family of Mirza Buzurg? And uh, Mualem says, yes, I know the family well. And he says to him, is there anybody in that family who you think is is outstanding in any way, similar to the ways that Mirza Buzurg was outstanding? And Mualem immediately says, yes, one of the sons of Mirza Buzurg is well known throughout the region for his his noble qualities of loving kindness and liberality. And Mullah Hussein starts to question him further. He says to him, what is his occupation? And Mualem says, he cheers the disconsolate and feeds the hungry. What is his rank and position? He has none, apart from befriending the poor. How does he spend his time? He roams the countryside and delights in the beauties of nature. How old is he? Twenty-eight. What is his name? Hussein Ali. And so Mullah Hussein is intrigued by this, and he asks Mualim if he might deliver to this Hussein Ali a scroll containing some of the writings of the Bab. And so the next morning, Mualim takes this scroll and he sets out for his hometown of Nur in Mazandaran. And he makes his way to the home of Hussein Ali, which is, of course, the birth name of the man who will come to be known as Baha'u'llah. And he arrives at the house of Baha'u'llah and Baha'u'llah's brother, Musa, is sitting in the garden. And he says to, to Musa, uh, I have this delivery for, for Baha'u'llah. Can we bring it into him? So Musa brings Mo'alim into the house and they give this scroll to Baha'u'llah. And Baha'u'llah reads these words of the Bab and he turns to his brother and he says to him, Musa, what have you to say? Whoso believes in the Quran and recognizes its divine origin and yet hesitates, though it be for a moment, to admit that these soul-stirring words are endowed with the same regenerating power has most assuredly erred in his judgment and has strayed far from the path of justice. So at that moment, Baha'u'llah, the, the son of the one of the greatest ministers of the royal court, embraces the message of the Bab and then redirects his entire life towards the promotion of that message. And he then gives to Mo'alem a, a, a package of tea and sugar, which he asks be delivered to Mullah Hussein as a token of his thanks for having delivered this message to him. And so Mo'alem goes back to the school in Tehran and he gives this gift to Mullah Hussein. And when Mullah Hussein sees this gift of tea and sugar, he just nearly leaps out of himself with joy. <laughs> yeah. uh, and... Um, Mualem is uh, is perplexed by uh, the, the 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 reaction of Mullah Hussein seems so uh, out of proportion to the the simplicity of this gift of tea and sugar, and the, the, this moment is actually recorded in Mualem's own words in the Dawnbreakers. He 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 says, Mullah Hussein took me in his arms, kissed my eyes, and said, "My dearly beloved friend, I pray." that even as you have rejoiced my heart, God may grant you eternal felicity and fill your heart with imperishable gladness. I was amazed at the behaviour of Mullah Hussein. What could be, I thought to myself, the nature of the bond that unites these two souls? What could have kindled so fervid a fellowship in their hearts? Why should Mullah Hussein, in whose sight the pomp and circumstance of royalty were the merest trifle, have evinced such gladness at the sight of so inconsiderable a gift from the hands of Baha'u'llah? I was puzzled by this thought and could not unravel its mystery. 
And so Mullah Hussein reports back to the Bab, telling him that he has found the hidden treasure of Tehran, and it is Baha'u'llah. So we'll pick up the story in the next video as the Bab prepares to embark on his pilgrimage to Arabia to publicly announce his message. And uh, in the meantime, I would be so grateful if you would give this video a like and share it with your friends and invite people to come to the, the Gate of Heaven Facebook event. And if you'd like to support my videos and my music, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash Luke Slot. Uh, and don't forget to look out for Wondrous Paradise on Saturday, March 16th. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.